first thing you need to do is accumulate uh, in a little finger bowl all of the whole spices that you're going to use. That includes the uh, mustard seeds, the cloves, the cumin, coriander seeds, black peppercorn, um, fennel seeds, and, uh, and the bay leaf. And we're going to uh, get all this ready together and in a separate finger bowl, we'll have this ready at the same time, we're going to put the, um, the, term the turmeric, the uh, cinnamon, and the cayenne pepper. And just leave these as powders. Indians are masters of spice and uh, they understand things that don't seem to have uh, made their way into Western cooking. And that is uh, especially whether you grind the spice first, whether you cook the spice as a powder, whether you cook it as a, an oil, whether you use it raw, whether you boil it in water first. These are all separate uses of spices that each have their own names and vary from region to region in India. Indian food isn't just one type of food. There's an enormous diversity and they understand that how you treat the spice is often just as important as what spice you use. In a small skillet we're going to heat up about two tablespoons of oil and we're going to fry these um, whole spices <clears throat> Once the oil begins to get warm, it doesn't have to be real hot, we're going to add the spices and the bay leaf to this. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this particular recipe is that the very same spices are used two different ways. You actually first cook these in hot oil, and you're going to use this to make the marinade, and then later you're going to put together the same spice mixture again, only you're not going to cook it in hot oil. You're going to toast it first and grind it and cook that into the, uh, the korma. Now, you have to keep cooking this, give it a swirl once in a while. You'll know that it's done when the mustard seeds especially, but, but you'll hear some little pops. It'll go pop, pop, pop and then you know that, that this is the temperature that you want to reach it at so we'll just give it a few minutes shake it just once in a while it's been a couple minutes now there. can you hear that? you're starting to hear little popping noises from the, from the seeds now we're going to take this and pour it the entire very hot oil mixture onto the other dry ground spices. And the heat from this oil is going to um, cook the, the ground spices so that they're not raw but it can't overcook them. It's a very clever method used in making marinade. <clears throat> now we're just going to let this sit here for a few minutes while we prepare the, uh, the garlic and onions that are going to go with it. Now, in the blending cup from the mixer, we're going to add the onion. I'm using red onion. You can just use regular white onion, <coughs> as well as uh, the ginger. This has been grated already because the uh, stick blender is going to have a hard time with uh, whole pieces of ginger. It's just too fibery for it. Uh, the garlic which I've given a rough chop to, again, just to, to help out the stick blender, have a little easier time with it. A uh, couple of tablespoons of cilantro leaves and stems. Um, doesn't have to be exact, just a small handful. Our spice mixture that we, uh, we fried. And then, and you might worry that these uh, whole seeds aren't going to be possible to to make smooth with a stick blender but they've been cooked in oil and they're pretty soft now and um, after the whole dish finishes cooking there won't be any chunks of, of solid spices you don't have to worry about that uh, also about a tablespoon of lemon juice and some salt and we're ready to begin the blend obviously this is going to take a few minutes um, oh, <laughs> mistake! You got to remember to take out that bay leaf. You don't want that blended in there. This is this is just discarded at this point. Okay, let it crank. And after a minute or so, we have smooth 
paste that we're going to use for the marinade. Just make sure that you don't waste any of it. Get it all out of the stick blender head here. Now we turn our attention to the chicken. I'm using about two pounds, uh, about 880 grams of uh, chicken thighs. You can use other cuts. I just like this and, and it's more authentic. Um, and when you get chicken thighs, depending on, on who your butcher was and how careful he was, you'll find there's little pieces of bone scraps on the back. This makes it very unpleasant for the person who's going to eat it later because they're going to get little tiny bones in with their, their chicken and also extra scraps of fat like this skin you don't need just adds fat to the dish. The um, large bones of course you, you're going to accept if it, you know, it's not boneless chicken but there's little pockets here of small bones and you can get rid of these. There's really no meat clinging to them and in the final dish it will make it much more pleasant. This is especially problematic in Russia where butchers tend to uh, cut meat up with, with a big axe instead of knives and you'll find bone splinters a lot of little fine bones so you always have to run your fingers along it even in other places in the United States you find bone splinters in the back of chicken thighs often so you should always look for this only takes a few seconds and when somebody's eating it they don't wind up stabbing themselves in the gum with, with a sharp bone that looks fine now and you just repeat the, the same process with the other pieces and in two or three minutes you've got all the bones out. You can use this for uh, a stock, uh, just brown the bones, nice uh, addition to a chicken stock and now we've got these pieces that are all cleaned up. Now what we're going to do is going to take and put a good heavy couple of slashes right down into the flesh on each one of these. I'm not just going through the skin, I'm going down to the bone because this is how you get the, the flavors to infuse all the way through the chicken. Okay, having gotten all that, we're going to move it into the tub <coughs> where it's going to uh, rest with the marinade. All the pieces are there. Now we take the spice mixture and we put it on all of it. Sometimes different parts of India they'll mix yogurt um, in with this to, to soften the flavors. But we're going to be mixing some uh, some kefir at the end. And if you put the yogurt in here, it just dilutes the, the spices. They don't have a chance to uh, to work as well on the chicken. So really, it's normally the only reason you would put yogurt in at this point is to help tenderize it. But this chicken's going to be braised. It's going to be plenty tender. It doesn't need any help from yogurt. What it needs is help for flavor. So I'm just going to massage this around. Try to get it into all the, the cracks, the pockets that you cut with a knife. And once you've, you've massaged it around pretty good, that's fine. Put it in the refrigerator for uh, a couple hours. Take it out. Massage it around again. Uh, do it again. You're going to leave this total marination time is going to be until the next day, if not uh, a day and a half. You don't want to go too, too long, but you do want to give it at least a day and a half, day to day and a half. To begin making the curry itself, uh, we assemble all the same spices that we had last time, uh, which is the uh, mustard seeds, the cloves, the cumin, the coriander seed, black peppercorns, and the fennel seed. Uh, all together as whole spices. I also have here uh, an ounce 30 grams of cashew nuts and uh, we're going to begin by toasting these in a hot cast iron pan. The pan is getting hot. I'm going to add the cashew nuts to this first and begin toasting them. Now, many parts of India, korma is made with coconut milk. Um, it's thickened just because the coconut milk gets thick as it cooks but uh, this is not that region of India this is where you make it with either yogurt or um, kefir and uh, you put nuts in it and the nuts thicken the, the sauce. But you want to toast them a little bit to intensify the flavor. So it's going to take a, a few minutes to start toasting. You just have to be careful not to burn these because uh, toasting nuts, this is a, a classic, classic 
way of burning something because it goes from, from being not cooked enough to being black in about 30 seconds. There's enough color on there. They're, they're toasted. Now we're going to take this pan, which we now know is hot because we just toasted the nuts in it. And we're going to toast the spices for about maybe 45 seconds. Okay, mustard seeds are popping, so we know that's ready. Now we have our toasted spice. Into the spice grinder, we're going to put the uh, cayenne, the um, turmeric, and the cinnamon powder. And, of course, spices that we just toasted. Buzz this up. Check it to make sure that it's a, a smooth powder, there's no lumps in it. Now we're going to put the cashews in here. We don't want to get these to a complete powder, but we want to we want to chop them up quite a bit here. And this is the, the spice mixture. As you can see, there's there's uh, larger chunks of cashew in there. The reason why is that um, the cashew will burn easier than the spices even. <clears throat> so uh, we want to make sure that the pieces are larger so they take slightly longer to cook when we actually make the curry. Now we're going to get ready to bake the chicken or roast the chicken. The oven is preheating, and uh, I've got 150 grams of uh, onion here, which I'm just going to slice like this, and I'm going to put it into the bottom of this baking dish. Now that the uh, dish is lined with uh, the onions, I'm going to also put a, a bay leaf in here somewhere. Just, just stick it in. I just want it to, the flavor to permeate. Now we've got the chicken that was um, in the marinade for a day and a half and this is going to go skin side up on top of the onions. There's going to be some marinade left in the bottom here, bottom of the pan. <laughs> Make sure it is skin side up. And the rest of the marinade, you can just kind of smoosh it around around the outside. You do want to use this because it's, it's additional flavor and that's ready now for baking as soon as the oven gets up to temperature. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven after 20 minutes at 240 Celsius. It's a very very hot oven. You want to see some of the skin starting to brown, juices rendering, and we're going to let this cool down before we proceed with making the curry. Okay, what I've done here is I removed the chicken with a pair of tongs <coughs> and I've left behind the, um, the onions in this dish. And I'm going to throw away this bay leaf now. Now we're going to separate these onions off to a plate too. I pulled the onions out of this. Of course there's a little bit of juice on them, but uh, uh, basically they're, they're just the onions. And uh, we have the juices in the pan. Now this is mostly chicken fat. And now in a pan I have an ounce of butter and an ounce of vegetable oil and you can use two ounces of ghee or clarified butter if you prefer this is easier works just fine the uh, the point we're looking for this is on a medium heat on a scale of one to ten it's a five and this is very important the biggest mistake you can make here is trying to speed this up get the pan too hot what you'll end up doing is burning the ingredients you'll burn the spices you'll burn the the garlic the whole thing will have a nasty bitter taste this is a dish that is going to require some patience. You're going to cook it at a medium low heat for quite a while. It's just the way it works. So this is uh, this is melting. We'll come back to it in a second here when the butter is melted and done foaming. When the <clears throat> butter and oil are bubbling, you can add a tablespoon of ginger and an entire ounce of garlic. Uh, it's chopped up. It's not minced. It's purposely not minced because if you make it really small it'll burn easier. We do not want it to burn. 
Now we're going to just stir this around like this on the same medium low heat until the garlic and the uh, the ginger soften a little bit. So it may be three minutes. You'll see there's, there's quite a bit of bubbling going on here despite the fact that the heat's only medium and that's uh, water coming out of the uh, garlic mostly. A little bit out of the ginger but uh, this is what we're looking for. We want to get rid of that extra water in the garlic before we proceed. So we're just going to let this cook still on uh, a low heat. In fact I'm going to turn it down to four on a scale of one to ten. This is now four and I'm going to let this uh, cook for another minute. It's been another couple minutes. <coughs> the garlic is um, just starting to develop some color on it. Now I'm going to add up that spice mixture. We're going to stir this around for maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Not too long because we want to be sure that spice doesn't burn even though the uh, if the heat is fairly low it still can burn. Now we're going to put the um, onions in that, was, that the chicken was cooked with. And now this is going to cook down for uh, quite a few minutes. Make sure that the spices are finished cooking and the onions are all um, incorporated that seasoning into them. You don't want to walk away from this. You need to make sure that it isn't not sticking to the bottom of the pan. This is very important. You do not want to scorch it, um, either the, the spices or the onions. And uh, because this is a relatively thick mixture here, um, it will scorch fairly easily, even at a low temperature. So keep an eye on it. Don't walk away from it. All right, and a couple more minutes. Now this is um, looking quite good. It's starting to adhere to the bottom of the pan despite the stirring which is a fawn. I don't know if you can see that, but you've you got parts here that are they're not burning, but they're sticking to the bottom of the pan. So, now is the time we're going to add the chicken stock. It's going to deglaze the pan. And once this is deglazed, it's going to enable us to, to finally take a taste of this and decide how much more salt it might need. Usually half a teaspoon or so, but uh, you'll need to taste it to be sure. Okay, I added about half a teaspoon of um, salt to it. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of brown sugar, as well as now the yogurt. You add about 100 grams of yogurt to this. Now we have liquid that the chicken is going to finish cooking in slowly. So chicken goes back in. In there. We'll uh, turn these chicken pieces over once in a while and make sure that they're covered on all sides. But we're going to keep this at a low simmer, partially covered uh, for a long time. It has to cook very slowly for a long time to be tender and flavorful. It has now been cooking for 30 minutes with the lid on and I turned the chicken over one time during this uh, that you didn't see. Uh, now taking the lid off of it, turning the chicken one more time and now we're going to just continue simmering it until the sauce is thick. About 10 minutes into this reduction with the lid off I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of cilantro and um, about an eighth of a teaspoon of escatada or uh, hing. It's, it's an Indian spice. It's and this is also the time you can choose to punch this recipe up a bit with some more um, chilies. I'm just going to add a little bit. If you like it really hot, add a lot. Korma is not traditionally a super, super hot dish. It's not like a vindaloo, but uh, obviously a little bit of heat is always welcome in Indian food. After about 20 minutes of this um, simmering with no lid on, you need to start really watching it and make sure it isn't sticking to the bottom of the pan. Even though it's on a low heat, this amount of time it's going to stick. It's got about five more minutes left to go. This has uh, been in 25 minutes. A total of It will have a total simmering time of one hour. That's half an hour partially covered and half an hour with no cover.
when the reduction is complete we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to this and some more fresh cilantro and Indian dishes like these curries are notoriously very very difficult to plate up and have them look attractive so don't feel bad if it's just a pile of meat in the middle uh, it will still taste absolutely awesome So look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.